What year is this? This is 2013. 2013 B2. Let me just write here. And what's causing it? So what they're saying here is uh, you have some gas and you have some light here and the light comes into the gas comes out of the gas and then you put it in a prism and you split the lights and here if you look at what you get it looks like this you have red, orange, yellow, green, blue you know, the usual stuff but they said that some are missing so there's like some black line here and black line here and a black line here and they want to know what's causing this yeah that's it, yeah um, the electrons are, yes absorbing the photons at certain frequencies electrons are in uh, discrete orbits so what's happening here is that you have your proton and you have your different possible electrons so if the frequency is too low then nothing happens and if you have the right frequency then the light comes in and will make the electron jump up to the next orbit but then of course now there's no light that comes out and that's explaining why there's these missing pieces here so it's only three marks, I don't know how much to write but that should get you the three marks yeah, do you want to write that down? no, don't, don't have to write exactly like me on okay, just once you got the idea yeah, I don't know send me an email tonight to remind me to upload it I'll do it okay can I go to the next question yes it's okay um, right so you have these different energy levels so uh, the question is I'll switch it now in a moment what is the ionization energy of hydrogen and express this in joules so in other words how much energy do you need to free an electron no, not as difficult as that simpler than that yeah, that's it so uh, the energy is 13.58 electron volts but they would like this in joules please
Thank you. 2.17 times 10 to the 18 joules. Did you get that too? Yep, fantastic. Right. What is the wavelength of the light when the electron moves from 3 to 2? So what's happening here is it's going from energy state 3. 3 to 1. Thank you, 3 to 1. Down to 1. Uh, so what's happening here is the electron goes from 3 to 1 and it will lose energy and this energy will be given off as a photon so first we shall calculate how much energy is lost E1 minus E3 will be negative what did you get? minus 12.07 EV so the energy of the photon will be 12.07 EV so that means HF will equal 12.07 EV. We need to change this into joules. So you get F equals 12.07 EV over H. So maybe you can convert into joules and divide by H. Tell me what you get. to the 15 hertz. Now did they want frequency or wavelength? Probably wavelength. Yeah. Usually they do. So then the wavelength I'll show you now. Yes. Yes. 20 in total. nanometers you want to know how many marks for this part? no, ok Oh yeah, for sure. Can I go back to the question now? You have it? Yep. Okay. So what's next? A photon of 12 EV is in a collision with a hydrogen atom. What would happen to this photon? Okay, so the photon has 12 electron volts um, and it hits it here. Um, that would be enough energy to take it. Well, and what's the difference between these two numbers, please? Now, actually, what's the difference between this number and this number? Uh, it's 12.07, isn't it? Yes. Which is exactly how much this has, yeah? Yeah. So when the photon hits this electron, what will happen to this electron? Yeah, it'll go to energy state 3. 
That's it. No, the electron. Oh, stop. It is the. It was absorbed by the electron, and the electron moved to the higher level. So I'll just say, um, it's, yeah, it's dead. Sorry. Um, I will say this is part um, trait. The photon is absorbed by the electron and the electron moves from state 1 to state 3. What is the uh, energy that is That is a very good question. I think what will happen is um, a photon will be released equal to this energy. Because if there's not enough energy to get to the next state, then the extra energy will just be released by the electron in the form of a photon. Mm, you could say the photon loses energy. Its frequency is reduced. So what would happen here is the photon would come in. Uh, how much energy now? 12. So I have 12 electron volts on a photon, and you're an electron, and you're in state 1, and you're state 2, and you're state 3. So I would come in, and I hit you, and I would lose my 12 electron volts, and then you would move up to here. Now, I don't have enough energy to give you to make you go to here. So this energy I keep, and then I continue on my way with less energy. But of course, if I have less energy, then my frequency is less as well. Now, they don't actually do this in the exam. In the exam, as you can see, they usually pick numbers so that the electron fully heads the photon. This is the normal situation. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's look at what's next. So you have light of a uh, wavelength and a work function, and what is the kinetic energy? Well, that's easy peasy, isn't it? What formula do you need here? It's um, the Einstein one that you got the Nobel Prize for. HF equals work function plus KE. Now, they give you the work function, you know this, and they nearly give you this. In fact, I think they give you the wavelength. Oh yeah, sorry, sorry. And um, they give you the H, they give you the work function, they nearly give you the frequency, but they give it to you as a wavelength. So, what the kinetic energy? Why don't you start calculating it? I'll do it on the board. Uh, here are the numbers. Now, I don't have my calculator, but this is what I would have to type in on my calculator. It should be a small number. Is in elect two point one electron volts. So you need a um, E.
Brian, since you've got people now? Still working? Can I? Can you break this down and then I calculate it? Because they give me this, but I need to use this in my formula here. Um, okay, what's next? What is the Debrouille wavelength? So that's also something we did today. Do you remember the formula for Debrouille wavelength? Uh, H over P. So, uh, I know H, what constant is it who? H is... Six, thank you. And um, what's the one for mass of electron? Zero three. And do we know the velocity of the electron? Ah, uh, we don't, because um, we can work it out from here. They can say a half m v squared equals this previous answer. Oh, not the kinetic energy. So I'm not actually finished this. Okay, so let me just go back a step here to get the v. Um, mm -hmm. What number is mass of electron? Three, is it? Okay, so here I got velocity of 201597 meters per second. Okay, now I can calculate it. And H again? Okay, mass of electron is 3, and the velocity I have previously. 1.5.7 syntax error. Um, I got 3.61 nanometers. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. Um, the next part. Why would the electrons have values from zero to be? Yeah, although I remember the magnet scheme was a little bit strange here. Basically they said this calculation for the work function is for electrons which are on the surface. In fact, the electrons which are further down need more energy to be free. So that means they will have less velocity when they leave because they need more energy to be free. 
Originally, when I did this, um, I thought the answer was what you said, and I still think that's a pretty good answer. But in the marketing scheme, they said um, the electrons further down require more energy, and so they will have less kinetic energy after the three. Not great, but that's what they said. Why are the velocities not all equal to this V? Why would some be less? And the answer is some electrons are below the surface. Therefore, the potential energy is more negative, which implies less kinetic energy when free. It's like they need more energy to be ionized because they're more trapped below the surface. Can I go back to the question? Yeah. I think we're on the last part already. What is the maximum wavelength of light that could be emitted, could emit photoelectrons from the surface? So in fact this is not as um, difficult as it seems. <laughs> yeah. uh, because here, do you remember there's a minimum frequency that will free the electrons and if the frequency is less than this, then it's not free. In fact, this is what they want. And you said the formula, say it again, Abraham? Uh, yes, that's it. HF equals work function, so the F equals work function over H, which is the work function here? It is 2.1 electron volts over H. So on your calculator, what's this? number 5.08 times 10 to the 14 hertz but they want the wavelength which is C over F which would be I put in nanometers as well 591 nanometers frequency. 
And then when I get the frequency, I use this formula to get the wavelength. Yeah? Yeah? Speed of light. Yes. Yeah. Three times 10 power 8. I don't think so, actually. Let me see. Yeah, it's in the form of the book. Okay. I strange that it's not here. So I have to copy it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why it's not here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why it's not on the cup there. Seems like it should be. Yeah? Actually, I think I have a reason. I think I know the reason why, but I won't tell you. Why? Why? Complicated. Why? Uh, the reason is, all of these could change, because if you make more accurate experiments, maybe you can get these to be more accurate. So these can all change. The speed of light does not change because of our definition of what a meter is. So if you want, uh, you, could, you could look this up. But anyway, I think that must be the reason. Because all the other constants can change depending on how accurate your experiment is. Okay, sorry, I'm wrong. But they call it, they call it C0. What? Uh, C0 is C0 on the calculator. C0 is C. It looks like it. Eventually it's 